Welcome to Corrective Consciousness, episode 68, the podcast about our lives and love of pop culture. I am your host, Vise the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And Pyro Jack Frost. Oh man, the OG3 back again. <laughs> yes. I think that kind of loses its meaning the, the more often you feel like you have to say that. <laughs> but... But, well, no, but, he, but it, keeps, it keeps the show exciting, though. Don't like, call it a comeback. <laughs> in, in the year, years. like, 2075, whoa, same people again, oh my god. <laughs> are, are you just poking holes in the fact that I really actually have nothing to say at the beginning of this podcast <laughs> oh. <laughs> to get people going? We're falling apart, me. man. We're rapidly deteriorating. <laughs> oh, man. That that reminds me of uh, the uh, Salvador Dali uh, painting, uh, you know, the, um, Persistence the, of memory. the melting clocks. What? Mm-hmm. Persistence of memory. Yeah. yeah. Th- there's, like, um, there's a sequel to it called, like, the degeneration of yeah. the uh, persistence of memory or something like that. Oh. That's great. Oh, yeah. yeah, I only learned about that, like, probably from Vice, like, either this year or last, and it blew my mind. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's like Py- a it's- sequel painting. I've never heard of that. Yeah, Pyro, it basically looks like the Melting Clocks painting, except, like, they're getting, like, if memory serves, they're getting, like, computer glitched out. Like, there's, like, a bunch of pixely, <laughs> like, it, their pixels, like, it's fading away. Or not fading yeah, away, it, but, it, like, it it's like, glitching out, yeah. It, it looks like it's going from an organic um, forms into um, very geometric forms. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so, so um, and that's before computers were like a big thing you know like this was back when mainframes were around so it wasn't like it wasn't like that was the typical imaging from computers uh you know it was still punch cards and stuff back then yeah it's pretty out there but uh yeah it's it's pretty cool uh, that he thought of that but anyway um pyro why don't you uh start us off this week all right uh so i mean i was gonna give a grand blue fantasy update but Really, the update is just me saying that, hey, I'm still playing it, and this is probably the longest I've played a mobile game. Right. So, that's that. Um, are you getting tired of it, or are you still going strong? So, I think part of me wants to take, like, a little break, but I know I'd miss events. So, like, there's times when, like, I, I know there's a lot of story stuff that I still need to do, um, but I'll get drained from the events that I'm, like, Okay, I finished the event. I'll just take a break until the next event. So I think, I feel like part of me, it just needs that break in the sense of I play for the event to get that stuff, but then I don't do anything else to give myself like some leeway. But overall, I will say that I'm still going strong because I still want to play and I still enjoy the game and the quote unquote world, let's say. So I, I think. Like I said a couple weeks ago, that this is going to be, this is going to last me a while, if not be the only game I play for a long time. Nice. Uh, so be- is, is is this game made by like a, a famous company or is it like uh, like a more mobile centric company? Um, so it's a more mobile centric company, but okay. overall, it's actually I wouldn't say a famous company, but the art. I think I mentioned this before. The artist of this game is the same one of the artists that did Final Fantasy Tactics. Oh, okay, so cool. it has, and I really like that art style. Sure. Um, and he's also going to be making a new mobile game. So oh, if nice. that game's good, then that might actually be the one thing that gets me off of Grand Blue. But um, and I think uh, the writer is some from something famous. But uh, yeah, so so I think that's really what drew me to it was the art style, and the yeah. gameplay is actually one of the better gameplays of a mobile game that i've seen before cool that's awesome um so yeah the next game i wanted to talk about actually is one that dracology i believe talked about last time he was on uh battle chasers night war yeah yeah that looks great i want i want to check that out what's your opinion on it i love it and actually it's really fun coming from the final fantasy games where i kind of felt like they were chore near the end when i played uh 10 and 12 but Battle Chasers is definitely like a throwback to old RPGs um, where you have turn-based combat, um, your characters level up, uh, they have equipment. There's also a little bit... I don't I don't like the comparisons people had to Diablo in the fact that you explore dungeons that are randomized, but it has this cool feel that definitely feels like a throwback, but modern enough. And I really like that art style. Like I, It's the same artist that did uh, Darksiders. Yeah, oh, okay. And and actually playing this has gotten me to thinking when I eventually do beat this because I'm juggling, like again, like usual, many games at once. 
Uh, but whenever I do beat this, I think I'm going to go back and actually finally play Dark uh, Dark Soccer, or sorry, Dark Siders 2. Because yeah. I actually haven't played that yet. Especially because the third one's going to be coming out in like a year, or whatever. Yeah, it is. against all odds, too. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was actually really excited to see Battle Chasers because I was like, I know this from something. And I, I it was actually a comic. Used to, yeah, I actually used to read the comic, and I was like, that there's was only no like, way it's the same thing. And it, I believe and it, was. it was only, I believe it was only like 12 issues long, too. Yeah, because yeah, it was no short. one read it, so it got canceled. Oh, I, really? I was like the only person I know of that read it because the yeah. uh, I, I read it because the art was fantastic. It was really yeah. good. Yeah, I really like his art style, and like I said, the game is good, uh, but it is an RPG, so it is somewhat time intensive. So I wouldn't, even though you might like the art and you might want to try it out, it, if it's a game that you want to beat, it's gonna give, take you some time. Uh, especially because like all the you don't have to, but all the dungeons have three different difficulties. Uh, you only have to beat them on the norm on the normal difficulty, but once you beat normal, you unlock, let's say, heroic, and then once you beat that, you unlock nightmare, whatever it's called. I'm just making up the names for difficulties, but basically, sure. there's three different difficulties, and you get better loot for beating them. Um, but whenever you level up, your characters get stat points you can put into their make their ability stronger or their stats better. Uh, they get skills. There's like a limit break basically in this game where, as you go through the story, you unlock different levels of limit break. Um, but yeah, it's it's actually a really fun game, and it, it was actually funny because today I had about an hour before the podcast started, and I was like, "What do I play?" Because I haven't played Final Fantasy fourteen in, and Old Man Stompy will agree with this in too long because he always <laughs> seems to complain when I I don't go on. Um, so I was gonna play that, but I started it up and I had to download like a nine gig patch because I was gonna play it on my computer. And I'm like, "All right, I'm not playing that tonight." And then I was deciding between uh, Battle Chasers and Destiny 2. And I'm like, you know what? If I play Battle Chasers, it's probably going to be something I'm going to want to play for a long time tonight. So I just hopped on to Destiny 2 with a couple of my friends, um, which is the next game I wanted to talk about. Oh, okay. And, yeah, are I you, actually, which version are you playing? PC. Okay. Uh, and it's – I the, the longer I'm going to be on the podcast, the more our listeners might realize that I am a flip-flopper. So I think the beginning of this podcast, I mentioned I want to play more games on my PS4 because I just got a PS4. Oh, congratulations. So, but I've beaten all the games that I have for PS4 now. I beat Persona 4 and I'm like, or Persona 5, and I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to go back to it being a PC gamer again. So uh-huh. I basically I basically rebought Final Fantasy XIV expansion just so I could play it on PC. Because <laughs> once you buy the expansion, you can only play it on the system you buy it for, and I had it for a PS4. So I had to buy the expansion again for the PC to play it on PC. But wow. uh, Destiny 2 is definitely fun. I, and it, the, the, what I've been telling the friends that I'm playing with, and they both seem to agree with me, is it's like a better – I don't want to say a better version of uh, Borderlands, but it's a little bit more serious, although serious – I, is a construct because yeah, sure. you can this make game it tries, as goofy as you want it. Yeah, to this be. game tries to be funny, but it's not like like Borderlands tries to be goofy. I think yeah. that's a better way. Like Borderlands tries to be funny in almost all aspects of it, whereas Destiny tries to in, insert some humor into it, but it's not all about its humor. Yeah, I heard like it had like you know a particularly funny character, for example, yeah. as opposed to like you know the universe is just this way. Yeah. Um, but it's I fun. really want to play. I, I, I think yeah. I might get in on playing with you in a little bit. And I think it's better than Borderlands because it's better to do them online. Like, I know Borderlands was about co-op, but it was, since you only could have four players, let's say, in a game, and there was less interest of go. Like, it, it was basically just the story. Whereas Destiny, like, once you beat the story, there's a whole bunch more you can do with your friends. Plus, it's easier to just drop in, drop out of that. Like, in Borderlands, you have to make sure all your friends are on and you're playing at the same time. In Destiny, like, I could be on. And then, Vice, you could jump in. Yeah. And basically, if you see that I'm in a mission, you can just hop in the mission with me. Oh, nice. And Great. continue with that, as long as you're in that, like, sp- part of the story, whatever. Uh, so, I think, yeah, I think it's it's really good. And it's a great multiplayer first-person shooter that's more cooperative than competitive. And the fact that it's Bungie, like, it... I heard people on another podcast I listened to saying that it plays great and the shooting feels great. And I was like, I don't know what that means. Even though I played all the Halo games, I don't understand. But from playing this, it feels great. Nice. Like, 
I don't know if I'm just really good at the game, but I feel like I'm in control of it in in, in that sense. When it says the shooting feels great, does that mean like the aiming just really feels like it works, or like does it feel like there's yeah. weight behind your shots or something Bo- like that? Both. Okay. Both. Yeah, and I I would say that also the um the way that enemies take damage from what you're doing uh, feels right. Okay. Um, so so that's a big part of what m- makes a good first person shooter good. Like like Doom wouldn't be nearly as good if if it wasn't fine tuned in that way. Because yeah. like if if enemies yeah. were taking too many hits for what you were doing to them. Uh, it would feel like a slog and it wouldn't be fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so that's a very important part. Also, like um, having to uh, having enemies that that are fun to fight. Yeah, like their enemy behaviors. That's, um, yeah, that's important. Is very important. And Borderlands, uh, I feel, is is more about an RPG experience that yes. that has the um, that has the action qualities to it. But Destiny's the other way around. Yeah, um, actually, that's a good point. Like, I think that if you consider both of them first-person RPGs, Borderland is more on the RPG side, where Destiny is more on the FPS side. And the other good thing about Destiny 2 is, since it's by the people who started started Halo, basically, it has great single-player, and I haven't played the multiplayer, but I'm pretty sure multiplayer is fun as well, and you can basically hop between them as you wish. So I think that really goes goes for it. Uh, the last thing I want to mention, and it's something I, I really am sad to mention in a way, um, for multiple reasons. So I beat Danganronpa V3 recently, mm-hmm. oh. um, but I think it's my least favorite Danganronpa. Aww. Oh. No, wait, wait. I know it's my least favorite Danganronpa. <laughs> oh, no. It's, so... I th- part of my disappointment, I'll be honest, is that they didn't take the story in the best way I thought they could. Okay. Mm. Um, which I know is very much opinion, so it means nothing. But the other thing is the way that it ended, and again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the way that it ended made the whole game basically feel meaningless. Uh. In, in less of the fact of like you're battling despair or whatever it is, but more of just like there was really no point to it, and actually it made most of the series feel pointless. Uh, and I know. think, I think, and, and I'm going to try It was all to, a dream. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, no. I'm going to try to put this in a way that doesn't spoil anything, but I feel like this series would have been better as, like, separate stories uh, okay. of a similar situation okay. and not trying to connect everything together. Yeah, and because I, I, how often can you do the same conceit, Exactly, right? and yeah. I think I think the 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 writer of the game kind of felt that way and this was one of the only ways he feels like you could if not end the series then the the continuation of the series went in this way and i didn't think it was great um i feel like if each of the games was a separate situation of just like hey there's these random kids or even adults or whatever like it doesn't have to be kids either the thing is he kept with high school students the whole time there's a, a manga that does the same thing but there's like kids and an adult and like a younger kid and i wouldn't even say it's like the 999 or like those games but similar where you don't have to have all of them be high school kids and they they could have adjusted each game to be a similar situation but Dan, a different you can't have characters. old waifus that's, that's not <laughs> something that that even well, works hey all the girls could be high school girls and the guys could be older or whatever <laughs> yeah that's, that's much that's much healthier that's just what they want you don't want <laughs> that either um <laughs> but no so it's I, and i feel like the other thing is they kept trying to one-up themselves and yeah what, and the, pro- the problem with that is even if they succeed it'll it still often feels like you know but that was one explosion but what about two explosions yeah. it's just like ah. there's several it, there there are many there there are too many ups and downs in this game like where i'm playing it and like maybe one of the cases feels lame just the total case feels lame there's some cases where i'm like okay i'll just beat this case i'm almost done whatever yeah. and then and then it the, they do the reveal and i'm like oh shit i did not expect this wow and then it ends on a high note, and there's have been someone I go into it thinking of this high note, and then they start explaining more and more, and I'm like, wait, really? That's the reason why this oh. is this is stupid. Um, it turns out they were aliens. Like, I mean, and, what a twist! Yeah, just, but it's dumb. <laughs> and it's one of those things where, 
I kind of feel like this was supposed to be the swan song for Danganronpa. Mm -hmm. Like, even though they kind of, when they announced this game, saying, oh, it's a totally new series, uh, but it's still Danganronpa. And I think Spike Chunsoft has that mindset of, if this is supposed to be the sequel to a game, it's in the same universe or in the same world, or it's a sequel or prequel or whatever. Like, they don't see two games that are labeled Danganronpa 1 and 2 being completely separate from each other and not connected at all. And I think that I would like them, like to see them make another game like this in a different world called something different. That would be okay with sure. me. But I think Danganronpa is done. Yeah, I mean, th- that that would be ambitious, though. Like, I mean, it's kind of happened with movies sometimes, but I don't know if But it's had... like Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy is none of them are sequels. I oh, no, that, that's that a good Rampa. point that has happened with Final Fantasy. Because I was going to say, I would like to see a video game series called the same thing. It's wildly different. I somehow forgot about the most famous series of yeah. them all. <laughs> but it's... Overall, I think it was a, an okay game. Um, I'm playing the extra content now just because it's still something to do on the, the my commute. But sure. the game itself was... Eh. Okay. Gotcha. So, uh, and the only other thing I wanted to mention is that I marathoned Stranger Things Season 2 yesterday, so I've watched all of it. Nice. And I'm going to leave it at that because I think we're going to plan on talking about that at re- in Recon this yeah, week. With, so, with, without spoilers because the show's still new. But definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, Lotus, why don't you take it away? Okay. I haven't done too terribly much actual gaming here, so... um. I can make my thing a little bit quick. The first thing I want to mention, though, is uh, Fatal Frame 5 or Maiden of Blackwater. I had said, I think I had said on this podcast a while back that I had recorded the full game and I got every ending for every character and it's going to be 28 parts. Um, Now, it is true, like, I I had also mentioned that when you beat enemy ghosts, they do this sort of, like... I mean, I, I know they're dead, but they do this death animation. Like, ah, oh, you got me. You know, they start to, like, fade away. And when they do that, you can walk up to them and reach out and touch them. Like, you would grab an item where you slowly reach toward them. And there, there's this mechanic in the game called glancing, where you kind of, like, get a peek into their soul. And it usually shows you how these people died. And it's, like, full-on cutscene. And there are, like, 40 ghosts that... Well, there are 40 ghosts that make up your ghostpedia, but I think there's 37 you can actually do this to. So that's that's a lot. Although 36 unique cutscenes, I think, which is still an insane amount. And I had missed, uh, I don't know, like five to seven ghosts because some fights are a little hidden and some glance opportunities. Like, they're not that easy, especially if you knock a ghost back to the point where it's like a- on a point on the screen where you can't reach, you know, like over a fence or something. And you're just like, well, that's it for me. So I didn't get every glance, and I also didn't find every, like, note, like, every file in the game. And at first I was willing to take it as acceptable losses, but then I thought, like, well, that stuff actually provides, like, real flavor for the game, though, including the glancing stuff. And I was missing more of it than I thought. And I get unlockable power-ups from having gotten every glance, or every ghost with glance uh, on the ghostpedia and having found every file in the game and someone had messaged me like you know oh i saw you missed some stuff are you ready to go back and get them so i was like you know what i will so i recorded a 29th installment which actually took a while to do because <laughs> like you gotta get through a level you know like you, you can't just go i found the note and quit like i think you have to follow through with the level for everything to like to Save. take because yeah. if, if you abandon ship, it'll say, like, well, your progress you've made on this level will be lost. I assume that means item list as well. And I didn't want to really, you know, find out the hard way. So yeah, I had to you. play through multiple levels to get through it, which ended up taking quite some time. Including the last level, which, like, on a good speed run takes, like, a little under 90 minutes. So it's just like, oh. Yeah, I was going to say, that's probably Jesus. the longest chapter. Yeah, the, the, the last level is, like, play through most of the areas in the game again as, like you know as all the playable characters you know it's it's the it's the grand it's the grand finale like you're playing as one character but wait boom like you got somewhere interesting let's see what this other character is doing and like i get it but it really it gets it's time consuming yeah Um, but i actually did it so i'm that's 
that's going to be some episode to edit. But in any case, I at least got the footage for it. So now I have a more comprehensive Fatal Frame 5 experience. The only... The only things I haven't got, which I explained what they were and how to get them in the Let's Play anyway, so... It's nothing you haven't seen before. It's just, like, certain effects, like, when you can pull them off. So it's not an emergency that I don't have these. But the only things I missed were having gotten a certain character's both endings while she's wearing a certain costume that unlocks a particular lens for your camera. Uh, there's beating every level in the game, like beating story mode. You know, I, I did that. But there's also beating every level in the game on both normal and hard difficulty. That gets you something. And then there's getting an S plus rank on everything on normal and hard yeah, difficulty, which that. gets you... <laughs> I know, but like that's one of those things. Fatal Frame has always done this. Like just when you've gotten everything in the game to the point where you don't need to play it anymore, they give you like the have another fun power. Challenge. No, not another, oh, not uh, another challenge. They give you the just screw around power. Like in an earlier Fatal Frame Chicago game, it was shotgun. like or Chicago yeah, typewriter. Chicago typewriter. Yeah, like yeah. like earlier Fatal Frames would give you like an ability that's like any special move you would use, like your energy bar is charged for it at all times or something like that. Um, in Fatal Frame 5, it's a pretty stupid power, actually. You can take a picture of a ghost anytime we want and do minor damage, but if you ever catch a ghost mid-attack, you know, you'll get this little sensor going like blink, 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 and if you catch a ghost at that point, some windows of opportunity are greater than others, then you get what's called a Fatal Frame where you hit the ghost and it goes like, ah, and it goes reeling back. And if you keep mashing the attack button while this timer counts down, you can hit them again. And the ghost falls back and you get a little bit of timer back, but then it rapidly drains again. So if you're, you know, you can get like a three hit combo, depending on how close you are to the ghost in the first place, you can get more hits and just do this massive combo hit. Uh, and like the, the, the final super duper ultimate unlockable in the game is every single shot you take counts as a fatal frame shot. So you don't have to wait for a ghost to attack. You can just be like, hey, there's a ghost in the distance. Boom, and just start comboing. It's like the dumbest thing, but it's quite <laughs> satisfying. <laughs> so that's, you know, there's that. Um, honestly, that's like the dick around power up, but at least some of the other stuff I've unlocked, you get to see like new things. Like they're not necessarily nearly as practical, but they're cool. So I was at least able to show that stuff off. The other stuff I could explain and you can easily picture it, you know? So so that's Fatal Frame 5. So I, I finally, I think, have recorded everything I want to of that game. Uh, something else I want to mention is... Um, uh, I've ta we've talked about um, limited run games before. And the, um, the biggest, like, everybody wants in uh, game that they were selling... I don't... I can't really say recently anymore, but, like relatively recently was uh their physical re-release of night trap they they yeah put that up... was like a sensation yeah like it's finally here guys um and you know obviously that's a digital title and only it's i probably think... like their number one selling game <laughs> that yeah they <laughs> that, that that's something people have actually heard of and really wanted to jump on so yeah that that was rough to order for so um that they they released like a ps4 edition a ps4 collector's edition a PC big box edition. Uh, the I think you can watch this on YouTube, but I mean, again, the point of limited run games is physical. That they, they had like a Blu-ray version of like the the documentary kind of of Night Trap, uh, which is a kind of a, a cool thing to have. So and like the limited run games version of like a vinyl of um, I think there's only like two tracks in the game, like the Night Trap theme and like the creepy like oh no I, I, watch out for the bad guy like theme that plays like in the bathroom in that famous scene so it's like it's like a two disc you know small vinyl or a two um not a two disc a two track uh small vinyl disc an um, lp okay yeah there you go uh no no no, no a lotus like, print yeah i was gonna say no vice what i do is lp <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's not an ep it's an lp yeah so um so the, there was a whole bunch of stuff. Now, I, I was actually able to order what I wanted. I got through. So um, what I had ordered was um, I wanted the uh, the PS4 Collector's Edition and the the, the PC version because they, they came with slightly different stuff for, like, the cool swag factor. So I was actually able to, to get in. Um, you know, everybody complains about the ordering thing, but I haven't had 
actual problems with the ordering system. I've just been supremely lucky, I think. But, you know, you can't roll the dice and get lucky seven every single time. Eventually, I, I'm going to get I screwed. I can't wait for the double switch uh, release. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh boy. <laughs> can't, give, give, me that, uh, give me that wire head. All right, so, um, so I was able to get that stuff. And when the, uh, the package eventually arrived in the mail, I did, in fact, get the PS4 Collector's Edition, but the PC version wasn't in there. Instead, I had the Blu-ray documentary. There must have been, you know, a mix-up. A mistake, man. So I was like, oh, man. And the, the problem is, you know, I didn't think I'd be able to go, um, excuse me, can I ship this and you send me back the other thing? Because, like, the whole point of this is that it's limited-run games. Mm-hmm. You know, do you really just have... The other thing lying around. Didn't I'm you sure they out? have a, a a certain amount for um for breakage and things like they that. They probably did, but like the yeah. good news is, I know we've talked on this podcast before about what a royal pain in the ass it is to order from limited run games, and how like the the buying system could be revamped. But I will say this: customer service is on point. Um, you know, I I opened a ticket saying, "Hey, I think I got uh, something of a wrong order," and they were like, "Oh." Yeah, okay, I, I I guess that makes sense considering, like, the month of Night Trap. I think they were even releasing something, like, I think almost every week. And there was just, there was so much shit they were dealing with in shipping. Like, they, I sure. mean, you know, you know, I mean, we the customers... They're bound can, to make mistakes. Yeah, yeah we the customers mm. can easily talk about how stressed we are in the buying process. But, oh man, like, I feel bad for the <laughs> games itself. So, um, they had said, okay, so, you know, if you do send us the Blu-ray back, then, you know... There's going to be, like, a second wave of, you know, PC stuff to, to ship. You know, the, they, they shipped in waves. I didn't realize that. So they're like, well, so we'll, so we'll make it right. And I was like, okay. So um, I, you know, I sent back the Blu-ray, and I took pictures of me putting it in the packaging and then sending the packaging. And I uh, emailed them the tracking number, and they just, like, and they refunded the, the shipping cost, like, Oh, that mo- was nice. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that was cool yeah. of them, and they told me they would. And they, what, what I thought was cool though, was that they refunded the shipping cost. Um, uh, like as soon as I emailed them, like not as soon as they received it, like they sent oh, me wow. back the the refund, like you know, like a half hour after I was like, I shipped it out. So that, that was really cool. That was like some good faith. So it did take a while to receive it. I did see on their Twitter account though, they had mentioned like, guys, we're we're drowning here. Expect us to start shipping on like mid September or something and I'm like okay I'll wait till mid September before I say anything and a few days after that I had just you know I gave one more shout out like cuz they had told me um when when things start moving I should see on my profile page like the customer profile page where it shows your order history my order history should say like fulfilled and then very shortly afterward I should receive an email notification that says my thing shipped Oh, well, my thing said fulfills, but I didn't get any email notification. So I sent out an email about that. And again, pretty quickly, like at least within the day, or at most within the day, I got a response saying, oh, okay, yeah, like I'll, I'll go ahead and take care of that. Then I did get proper notification. And finally, like last week, uh, it did arrive. So, you know, it's all of happily ever after. Like the actual getting the right products to me took a while, but that was to be expected considering how busy they were and made it clear they were from the beginning. So, and like, again, the customer service, like, responses were really like quick and on point and got the job done so that was like a just a really good experience in that regard so just shout out to uh limited run games for you know really being good about fulfilling their uh their their tickets for uh on the customer service block nice that's yes. always good to hear so that, that that was really nice it wasn't like oh sorry buddy nothing we could do so that that was uh really nice uh i only wanted to mention well yeah yeah um the, the, this is kind of funny. The last time we were at um, at Pyro's place, we were watching Vampires Kiss. Um, <laughs> our friend Perry had uh, lent me a book to read that he had found and bought specifically because, like, it just looked silly to him. It's this like it looks like just one of those old. It, it looks like a Pulp Fiction kind of book. Like it says it, on the it, it front cover, seventy five cents. Uh, um, Choose it your own reminded adventure. Me of the old old um bond uh, james bond uh, oh covers. sure yeah, yeah. oh it's, yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's an it old style like it's an old style cover um but yeah it says like right on the cover it's like you know 75 cents you know on the bottom it says never before published and this is published in like the 60s <laughs> um and 60s sci-fi so but, it starts with a lie it never and it clearly never had a uh, hardback version that's the uh, thing it was first, probably like yeah. some it was meant to be disposable. <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
the funny thing is, though, the reason he bought the book was that the more you look at the cover, the more you see and the more questions you have. Because you see, like, the book's called Time Gladiator. Um, and what you see is, like, an old-style Greek, like, gladiator with a helmet that obscures his face. He's wielding a gladius. Um, and he's got, like, a shield. But the shield has, like, clearly the the American Eagle holding, like, the, um, the arrows and, like, the... Actually, I just, I, I didn't even notice this. <laughs> not, not the olive branch, but, like, uh, what looks like a missile. It looks like each talent is holding missiles <laughs> instead of wow. the arrows or the, uh, the olive branch. There's, like, all this fire and smoke behind him. And even further behind is, like, it, this is from the 60s, so this makes sense. But, like, a 60s-looking, like, Jetson-style, shiny, curvy, like, sci-fi cityscape. And it's like, what is this book about? Like, what, like what? That, and that's that's why Perry bought it. Fighting spaceships like, with swords, just like in Ultima. No, like there, there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, and like speaking of space, like there's no spaceships or anything on the cover. But if there were, like they don't, they don't even mention this in the book. So I, I'm making this up. But like, I promise you, it would totally be those like those bubble windshield cars. I bet you it would be those, <laughs> um, like those Futurama cars. But um. Like what is like what is this book? Why is there an old timey gladiator in super future with like an American sheet? Like what the fuck? So and like the uh, the the front cover like below time gladiator says twenty first century, which is already kind of funny. Twenty first century <laughs> gladiators fight a duel to the death to stop war. Dot 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 and save the world from final destruction. And it's like oh my god. Um, I gotta say like. When I took the book out, you know, Vice was like, are you actually going to read that? Because, like, he thought it was just, like, I mean, honestly. It's what, funny what, just what, to have. That's the that's thing. That's, 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 that's kind of, like, Perry bought it, like, kind of as a joke. It's just, like, look at this. Uh, and I was like, no, man, this makes me, like, really want to read it. Because, like, like you, I, I, I really want to see what the hell this could possibly be. I got to say, it was, it was a good read, actually. Um, and here's here's the surprise. There There is... Gladiator. No spoilers. No spoilers. Yeah, no, yeah God forbid. <laughs> there, there is gladiatorial combat in the book, and in fact, it opens with that. But there's only like two combat scenes of almost any kind. It's really, it's less about gladiators and more about political intrigue, of which there is a bunch. So it's Gundam. It's the Gundam Wing of uh, 60s <laughs> novels. Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh. Is that how that works? There's like no fighting in uh, Gundam Wing. Gundam Wing is famously just almost all political intrigue. It's oh. Okay. All, like it looks cool and it has good fight scenes when they happen. Yeah. But good reused fight scenes when they happen. <laughs> yeah. Good reuse of the same. Uh. What like uh the same mook getting uh, exploding oh. every time. But yeah. uh. Well, well, cool looking well, characters and cool looking. Um, you know, main characters, but uh, it famously just has lots of talking. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, this book is mostly talking, but it's actually pretty interesting, especially because it gives you both an American and a Russian perspective, because, like, the world is post-war, but, like, the back of the book says Cold War, 21st century style, which sounds goofy as shit but it's actually pretty much true ah. like uh basically it's in a post-war society kind of where um there's basically like th the earth's basically divided into four major territories there's like i i think it, there, there's westland there's like i think it's like europe or euroland there's sov like sov sov sovland like for the soviets because this is, you know, before Russia, this was the Soviet Union at the time the book was written. And then, like, Newt land, like, N-E-U-T, like, neutral. And it's really interesting because basically we've gotten rid of... I, I want... Th there was a time limit on this. Like, it, we, we got rid of, like, all weapons from, like, this point in history onward. So there's there's no more missiles. There's no more guns. Like, even if we wanted to fight a war, it would have to be with, like... You know, so like World War One. Yes. Then no, if we, if we want a war, we have to fight it with swords and pointy sticks. Like we don't, <laughs> like um. Oh no no no. I, well, I think with actual wars, I think they no no they no they do have pistols. They do have pistols. Um. Yeah. They they, they have like generally low tech 
high-tech weapons. <laughs> um, so yeah, like basic guns is like as good as you're going to get. Like bombs are just not a thing, you know, that kind of stuff. But the thing is, what if the other government, I know I'm being a good person, but what if the other government is researching, um, you know, high-tech weapons? We wouldn't want to let them get that, you know? So like there's suspicion that that kind of thing might happen. And so like this person spying... Um, in the name of this government, that person spying in the name of that government, and the person on the American side happens to be just, like, a really talented gladiator, because he was a professor of, like, old-school, like, fighting in, like, that period in history, because he, like, just noticed that people were teaching it wrong, and, like, the media depicted it wrong, so he became, like, a nerd in that category, and he actually practiced fighting in that style, because he's a nerd, but that means he's actually a really goddamn talented fighter now. <laughs> the, the book's pretty damn fun. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, that's that's good actually yeah and the last thing i'll mention briefly is that like pyro uh, i did not completely binge stranger things but i saw the first four episodes and you know we can talk about that later but definitely liking what i've seen so far and like i mentioned well yeah we'll talk about it later did you watch it with luminaire yeah i did um good yeah i i can go i can go into that if you're going to mention it sure. for your core con but yeah you you, you go ahead uh vice I actually haven't haven't watched it yet, so I'm excited to hear uh, you guys talk about it. But oh, sure, anyway, sure, yeah. Um, I only played uh, a couple games this time around, but uh, they were really good ones. So I was, I was happy to talk about this. Uh, um, so I, I played, uh, to much to Pyro's uh, chagrin, I'm sure, uh, I played the, the newest Shin Megami Tensei game. Uh, it's a freebie Metroidvania called Synchronicity Prologue. Oh, I think so I yeah, this. I have to say that when I read the show notes, I looked at that and I'm like, "What? <laughs> what, the, what the fuck is this? <laughs> how 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 can this be? How is Vice what, playing this and what not me? World, what world am I living in where there's a Mega Ten game that I have not heard about and Vice of all people played it before me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, as as fans know and and uh as as you guys know uh i'm a big metroidvania fan and i was like i, I jump right the fuck on that oh so uh, it's a metroidvania kind of game it's a metroidvania yes oh shit awesome yeah it's a <laughs> lot of fun and uh you start off in the game of playing as jack frost um oh and uh it, it's pretty neat because it starts off um obviously with somebody booting into a computer and then waking up as jack frost so it's mm. pretty neat that it goes you know it kind of has that digital um, digital devil story yeah. devil story motif from like the original games um so it's meant to be a um promotional game that is uh supposed to promote the new version of strange uh strange journey for 3ds that's coming out and uh it is Jap japanese only however uh there is a fan translation already out for it wow uh, it really quickly came out it's like it's mostly done, uh, mm -hmm. so you could play the game, and it's not. It's not in bad. It doesn't have bad grammar or anything. It's just um, not all of the art assets that are oh, Japanese okay. have been changed over to English. So, so it's easy. It's easy to replace text with other text, right? But it's yeah. not easy to uh, like redraw something that was a yeah, Japanese character. That's a pain. Um, that that plus, uh, and I don't know if this is the problem in this game, but there's many times where there's a character limit, yeah. like a size limit, oh. and the amount of characters you might need to translate it from Japanese to English would go over that limit. So you, that's actually, you know the famous Final Fantasy V character, Butts? Yeah. yeah. That's why. Oh. They, only had four, they only had four characters for a name. So to translate it, they had to, his name is Bartz. They had to pick one of those characters to get rid of. And they chose and the goofiest one. <laughs> yes, but I mean, like, none of the other ones. B B R T S doesn't make any sense. Yeah. They had to keep a vowel in there, so... Yeah. It, it would have been better as bat. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah like in Hokotono but can, like bat, yeah. But still, but anyway. like, that, that's, <laughs> that could be a part of the reason why this translation didn't do the names as well. Sure. 
Uh, I like it. It, it. It's a simplified uh, Metroidvania. Like it, it's not like super complex or anything, mm-hmm. but it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, it has um, a lot of uh, Symphony that I isms. Like uh, there are um, secret areas that you can un- uh, unlock by attacking the walls. Mm. Um, you there are um, uh, you know hidden items. Uh, the big gimmick in this game is that you unlock other uh, other characters to play as. Uh, that you could switch between, kind of like in Portrait of Ruin, uh, you could play as mm. both Jonathan and Charlotte. Uh, in this, so far, I you could play as uh, Pyro and and Jack Frost. Uh, well, there so, you go. Um, both of me. <laughs> both of me. I, I suspect. Um, I, I suspect the third one will be uh, his Jack, full Jack name Ripper. is Pyro Jack. Pyro Jack. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's technically the the. There's Pyro Jack and Jack Frost and Jack Jack, and then there's Jack. There's Jack the Ripper, <laughs> yeah, who Jack was Ripper, not yeah. really always one of the Jack brothers, except for in um, the first the... Boy game. <laughs> yes, yes. That, wow, that was the first time. I, I don't think that was the first time Jack the Ripper has been in a Mega Ten game, but I think that's the first time they considered him one of the Jack brothers. That's funny. Gotcha. Uh, there's also a fourth Jack brother, but I forget what his name is. Um, but he's like a dog almost. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. So, um, also it... even better, there are multiple Jack Frosts, and uh-huh. there's there was in one of the Mega Ten games there was uh, basically the Jack Frost Power Rangers. Oh. There was like oh, wow. Strawberry Frost, like Melon Frost, Lemon Frost, and Hell they're all different yeah. colors. Yeah. Sentai Sorry. team. The Axum. No, 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 the Axum no. Jack Frost. This is yes. great. The Axum uh, Frosts. I unlocked uh, Pyro Jack, uh, and so... Oh, it, it thank was, you. <laughs> it, it's pretty awesome because he he can uh, he can float up to a certain level from from the ground level. Mm. Uh, so that that's pretty neat. Uh, a lot of mobility opens up mm-hmm. uh, when when he's there, um, and it, it's also really neat because uh, all the bad guys have weaknesses and um, and strengths, uh, just like your character does. So. Of course, uh, fighting a you know a, uh, a um, you know you could use fire against ice and it'll 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 work well. Sure, that kind of thing. Uh, it's a lot of fun. The graphics are really nice. Uh, apparently, it's made by a known Metroidvania um, developer who made Uh-oh. a game called uh, Pharaoh Plus or Pharaoh Plus. I haven't heard of that. Plus. Uh, it's it, it's well received in the in in the indie game community. <laughs> in the Pharaoh so. Plus community. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I just wanted to quick mention that it's a free game. People should download it while they can. It will only be available until December 31st. Oh. And uh, since the fan translation is hosted on uh, Google Dropbox, you should download that right away just in case that disappears. <laughs> um, yeah. Because God knows how long that person will put up with like tons of people downloading out of their Dropbox. So um, there, there's instructions on how to do it on Rock, Paper, Shotgun. So... Uh, uh, definitely check that out and download that while you can because uh, it's a it's a fun game. Um, definitely worth playing and downloading. Um, the other big game that I played this week, uh, I know I, I said that I would uh, continue to to play games and stick with them, and and for the most part I'm not dropping anything, but uh, I had to play this because I've been waiting. Uh, you know I, I've been real thirsty for this one. It, it's Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, and it does not disappoint. It feels like playing Mario 64 again. I, st- is... I still feel I would rather probably play Super Mario Iliad first. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> he can't find his way home. <laughs> it, it actually is probably named after the Odyssey for good reason. Uh, really? He is... He's got to well, avoid the last Dragonians. Mar- Mario is trying to... <laughs> Fight the Kraken. Is... Wrong no, Ma- I know, but still. Mario is trying to find his way back in order to prevent the wedding of Bowser and Mm. Peach. So it it, it follows the story of Odyssey loosely. So yeah, uh, Peach continually makes like a, like a, like weave something and unweaves it every night. (laughs) Yeah. And I was saying, I do remember that in that story, didn't he have a hat that he could throw on things and control them? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Or is that, or is that the Iliad? (laughs) No, that, 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 yeah, that was, that was, that was Mario of Homer's Odyssey. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> give me the kennings please i remember that time uh, but, i remember that time where telemachus possessed a t-rex 
Oh, oh, we have a we have a good excuse to uh, mention mental red haired yeah. mental ass, <laughs> red haired Bowser. <laughs> the very first um, uh, inside joke uh, from, from from Corcon yeah. that we ever had. But anyway, um, it is fantastic. It's the first three D Mario game that I really genuinely felt like plays Mario like Mario sixty four, like. I feel like I'm playing Mario 64, but like a new iteration of it. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's really, really good. Um, and just when you think you've found a lot of the power moons, which are like the star stand-in for this game, uh, there are uh, you find out when once you leave the level that there are tons you missed. Uh-huh. Like there's ton, mm. there's a lot of stuff to do in each uh, hub world. Uh, yeah, I heard so, there's like over 900 moons in total. Oh man! Yeah, yeah, and there, it, it's a it's a blast to play. Like I I, I only played the first two hub, uh, major hub worlds, um, and it's like a uh, the first one is like the grassland. It's like a, a dinosaur land, uh, and then the second one's a, a desert, um, and it it's a blast. I mean, it, it, you you don't know tr- true joy until you go up to a realistic. Uh, looking t- Tyrannosaurus Rex, and then like <laughs> possess him with your hat, yeah, and then great. he's wearing a goofy Mario hat and mustache. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Um, I possessed uh, a cactus, <laughs> and it hops just like little hops, <laughs> uh, like it, it, a frog. I've I've possessed uh, Bullet Bill. I didn't know I could possess a Bullet Bill. I threw my hat in order to like in order to explode the billet bill and then i turned into it uh, i was just like oh man this is so cool nice. uh, you can possess uh any of the the major bad guys like uh goombas um it was it, it's been a, a freaking blast and there's a new mechanic all the time there are new mechanics like constantly like you could take over a goomba in order to uh because goombas can walk on ice well oh oh that's um, right yeah i saw that in a trailer and, or, uh, uh, some kind of preview video yeah Goombas also can stack on each other too. Oh, nice! Uh, they can, so you can oh, have like, like that a, Mario three like enemy. A, uh, no, more like um, I guess I think I've seen them in Paper Mario where like it's just like a big tower of Goombas. Yeah, there's like yep. a big Goomba on the bottom yep. and a bunch of little ones like on top of it. No, 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 no. Or no, just no, a bunch no. of little like, ones. Just a bunch of but like all the same size. Oh, just straight like up. A tower of Goombas. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's so much fun. Um, it it it's it's a blast. It's an absolute joy to play. Uh definitely recommend it it's also a game you could play casually because you could be like oh i want to collect some more moons like apparently like the reward for collecting them all is 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 a small one kind of like in mario 64 is it kind of small like in uh zelda collecting all the uh (laughs) i'm sure it's not as insulting uh as just giving you golden shit uh but (laughs) no i I I think the most well i will that well that's like intentionally insulting but I i think the most like Oh come on! All of that for this was like Super Mario Sunshine, where it's just a screenshot. Yeah, I know. Well, you get a you get a new suit, don't you? Yeah, you get like a new uh, your your clothes a zoot change. suit, if you will. Oh, do I think you? your clothes change. Your clothes change. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's um, something. But anyway, um, it it's it's a it's a lot of fun. Uh, the coins that you collect, and also the like the special coins. Um, which are in the place of like the red coins in this sure in this case are are used to buy um, like accessories for your spaceship and also like or, or airship and also like accessories for your character like you can you can get new new hats and new new suits <laughs> it's really funny to see Mario in boxer shorts and a captain's hat yeah it's, <laughs> it's, it's here's really a question funny. now which which game is weirder? with the dynamic shift sonic adventure where sonic's just walking next to like real people or mario odyssey where mario... it's about the same to what? be honest uh, it feels similar okay yeah um to to be honest it, it, it's kind of funny because like the t-rex is the first um instance of you seeing like a realistic thing that doesn't really feel like it fits in the, in yeah. the mario universe uh, and then you, of course you see humanoid uh, you you see humans that are humanoids. Human. Yeah, Mario is humanoid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mario is like a cartoony human, and yeah. they're like actual humans. Um, so, uh, 
I'm thinking that maybe it factors into the story, or maybe they'll just ignore it. Who knows? Yeah, like in but, Sonic Adventure, it's just like they. That was the funny thing. They completely ignored it. It's just like Sonic lives here. Like, uh, okay, <laughs> and like it had nothing well, to do with anything. <laughs> Apparently, like, in the Japanese uh, instruction booklets uh, for Mario, or for, for Sonic in, 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 like, the first three games, like, Sonic actually takes place in the real world. Um, That's hysterical. Whereas, like, in the American versions, they did away with that. They made it more whimsical. Yeah, there was nothing um, about that in the American but version. in Japan, apparently, like, Sonic takes place, like, someplace off the coast of New Zealand or something like that. Um, <laughs> so it's so it's the real world, but it's cartoon land in the real world because everything is no, ridiculous. No, wait. Have you never been in New Zealand? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They got Lord of the Rings there. They got Dr. Ivo Robotnik. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I absolutely recommend it to anybody thinking about buying a Switch or or has a Switch. I, I can't imagine that you wouldn't want this game. It It's... It's just as ubiquitous as, as Breath of the Wild is. It's so good. Uh, it's It does the Mario thing better than any Mario game since... I don't know. Galaxy is supposed to be really good, So and I haven't really played that. Yeah, I haven't um, played Galaxy, but, like, the th- like, I've seen a bunch of it play. The thing with Galaxy is, like, it's kind of like what Mario 64 wished it could be. It's like, here's like real 3d environments where you're running around the planet and then like galaxy was kind of like the ultimate mario game of its time and then like so, but while well, like we where you can't imp- like where do you improve from there and then galaxy 2 came out and was even better <laughs> i was like what so, odyssey is the next step yeah uh, honestly like it, it it basically gives you gigantic uh sandboxes to play in with nice. with moons all over the place uh and and puzzles to figure out all, constantly oh and so nice. one other shout out i will give to galaxy by the way is that like you know the wii was not an hd console but like Galaxy 1 and 2 were about as good as standard definition graphics sure. could get. Like, it, like you, you were never tricked into thinking it was HD, but it did look a little better than what you're used to on SD consoles. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I want to quickly uh, move on to a couple small things. I, I do want to give a shout out to Old Man Stompy uh, for thinking of me. He was out at a Toys R Us and... Uh, picked up an extra SNES classic for me. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, shout out to him because I, I really don't have much time in my data to uh, track one down for myself, and I really wanted one uh, for, for Star Fox 2, basically. Yeah, I was going to say, when you unlock Star Fox 2 and play it, let me know how it is. Yeah, I, I really want to play it for that, and it's it's also really good because um, I, 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 I do have um, basically any flash cart you could ever want, but none of them can play certain games, um, and most of those games are on this thing. So, um, for instance, uh, Yoshi's Island is on here. Oh yeah. Star Fox, Star Fox Two. And... Yoshi's Island is my favorite Mario game. I know and, that a lot of people hate it, but it's a good game. It's a great game. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan and... of playing it, but I will say that that soundtrack is something else. And Mario RPG and um, uh, Kirby 3 and Kirby Superstar are all on this, and none of them work on any of the flashcards. I can't believe um, they got Mario RPG. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's plenty of good stuff on there. I'm sure they made a deal with Square in order to put the other Square titles on there. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm excited to play it. Um, you know, it was just a really cool thing that he he was thinking of me and, and fronted the money in order to pick yeah. it up. And for the record, Super Mario RPG might be my favorite Mario game. Like, I know that's not... Mm. I don't know if, I don't know how much you could call it a Mario game, but that, that game is brilliant. It's a great game. Uh, I, one of the... One, one of my favorite games, uh, for sure. Um, I also uh, su- surprisingly found a uh, fixed for modern systems version of no one lives forever online oh Uh, i was very happy to find that uh some somebody put put it all in a download all fixed up that's cool and and ready to play uh for modern systems uh that's one of the few games that like uh you still can't buy uh you should be able to um most of the really great pc classics um have gotten a release even even the um, even the most difficult of games have has have been basically released. Yeah, like uh, that Steam and GOG. Over. Yeah, especially Night Dive Studio. We've mentioned Night Dive Studios before, but they're the ones responsible for a lot of those like games you never thought would get a platform. 
Yeah, in fact, they tried to re-release No One Lives Forever. It was oh, them yeah. that tried to do it, and they got a cease and desist from uh, from Warner Brothers. Wow. So, um, and God knows whether I, uh, Warner Brothers actually has the rights to it. It's just that they think they do. Yeah, you don't want to lose that boat. Well, you don't want to get sued by them and then yeah. find out. Uh, even if even if you're right, yeah. you don't want to you don't want to be sued by them. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Uh, I I was playing that for a little bit and I was I was enjoying that. I hope to play more. Um, I also wanted to give a quick vinyl update. Uh, so I got a new Konami uh, vinyl. Uh, it's for uh, Lo- Lo- one of Lotus's favorites. It's for Silent Hill. They have an so. LP for that. Excuse me. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? And now, the, and now uh, Lotus uh, Prince is gonna get into vinyls. No, it I'm really a, no like like I love Silent Hill, but like. That's one of the series of games that I would like. I would least like to have a like an OST for. Like you don't just go like, oh, let me listen to some Silent Hill music with few exceptions of the tracks. <laughs> well, I, the Akira Yamaoka soundtrack is quite good. Uh, the vocal soundtrack uh, sound um, songs on it are quite good. So wait, vocal um, songs in, so in Silent, Silent Hill, Hill three. Oh well, maybe I haven't listened to it yet, but that's that's the one I remember from Silent Three, Silent Hill Three. But yeah, three um, for sure. But one and two didn't have vocals. Three and well, four, so you know what? Better than I do. Yeah, you know better than I do. Three and four. Well, I mean, one was on the PS One, so good luck pulling off vocals there. Two just didn't. Uh, three and four had some tracks with vocals. I think three had like two or three or something, and four had probably one of my favorite Silent Hill songs ever, uh, which happened to have vocals. Well, anyway, I, I I was happy to pick that up. Mondo Tease puts that one out, and uh, uh, it has a picture of the car accident on the front. So that's pretty cool. Wait, a car accident? What? Where are the vocals in Silent Hill One? Like you're blowing my mind, right? Unless unless it was like a. I, some sort of... I, I I I'm not quoting anything. Yeah, I I got a I got a. There's there's no vocals on this soundtrack, probably then. Oh, I, I okay, yeah, yeah. If it's Silent Hill One, then there's no way. It's definitely Silent Hill One. <laughs> okay, then yeah, then there, there's no vocals. There couldn't okay. be because otherwise it would sound like Parasite Eve's like MIDI vocals or like, well, One Winged Angel on FF Seven sounded pretty okay actually. I I just forgot. You okay. Know. Um, yeah. So, so to, but... to be fair, Silent Hill Three does have at least two tracks that sound, or at least one track that like really sounds like a Silent Hill song, and that's intentional because it's a sequel, and then all of a sudden gotcha. vocals just hit. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I was happy because uh, I didn't think of that as a Konami game because I was thinking, like, you know, like, 16-bit stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, so I decided to pick it up just out of completion's sake, and also, I like the original Silent Hill quite a bit, so... Yeah, it is really pick good. Pick that up. Um, that's a lot of people's favorite. And the only other things, just real quick, I, 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 I've started to watch the new season of Curb Your Enthusiasm, <laughs> that show hilarious. Yeah. Um, it, it still is hilarious, but I think it's gotten, like, so much more confident in itself. Oh. Like, it, it, it's so silly. It's gotten so silly. Great. And, uh, uh, it, the whole the whole series or uh, this whole season has this whole thread about like Iran, um, like calling a death threat uh, specifically on Larry David, <laughs> like the whole country of Iran. Um, That's and so amazing. he's just he's he he's waiting on the specter of like Iran trying to kill him, and they haven't. <laughs> and what? because he keeps screwing it up, they haven't lifted the death threat. Uh, so it's just it's really really funny. That's the dumbest. Uh, and the funny thing is, this is. A death threat on someone who has canonically already died. Yeah. What, Larry David? Yeah. What do you mean he's that, already died? That was how, like, the series ended. Like, he died and actually went to heaven with, like, angels with just, like, wings on their backs. Or I forgot if they had wings on their backs, but, like, they were just touring him through heaven. But Larry David was, like, being Larry David. You know, he's just kind of, like, <laughs> frustrating to deal with. And eventually the angels were like, all right, you know what? It, it it it's it's not your time and like he comes back to life like two or three minutes later so he did he did die <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny yeah um and lastly uh i threw a uh halloween party with my girlfriend um uh which uh old man stompy uh and and uh, minty mitts showed up to and we had a lot of fun uh we played some binding of isaac hey um, um, me and my girlfriend dressed up as uh, um, Vic Vega or Vincent Vega, Vincent Vega. and um, 
Mrs. Wallace. I don't remember Mrs. her first Wall- name. Mia Wallace. Ah, uh, Mia okay. Wallace from uh, Pulp Fiction. Yeah, and we mm. looked pretty good. Uh, like my my girlfriend had like a syringe sticking out of her blouse, and uh, <laughs> I had uh, so stab her three times. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I had the um, the bolo tie that. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that picture on Facebook. That was a classy look. Yeah, yeah, and we did, like, a, a recreation of the dancing scene. It was pretty yeah. fun. Yeah, I, I was looking for, like, on Facebook, I despise, like, using emojis. I just don't like them, except for, like, certain ones, like, just the basic smiley face, which is just turned into an emoji now. But I was really hoping they had shapes, because I wanted to do that, come on, don't be, uh, and, like, trace the square in the air. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Couldn't do um, it, though. But uh, we had a blast. It was a, it was a lot of fun. So um, we can go on to one question here. Uh, yeah, this one. So we can move on. Unless you guys did research on this one, I don't, I don't know if you know I about actually this one. did. Yeah, I, I had to look it up myself. Uh, the Fool Arcana asks Have you seen the trailer for the game City Shrouded in Shadow? And what are your thoughts about it? And I, uh, I, Vi I says no. Yeah. <laughs> this trailer is fucking crazy, okay, man. So, yeah, so I will say, same how when I saw uh, Vice's Mega 10 thing, when I saw this. I was like, you know what? I'll check out this trailer. Usually, I don't do this. Same with me, actually. And then, and then as I was watching the trailer, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, this this, so this Vice, looks amazing. Love this so, Vice, you know how you love kaiju movies and stuff like that? Yeah. Imagine a game where you play as a civilian. And you just have to oh, put up with this like fuck. apocalyptic it's super series. Like Cloverfield, series. the game. No, but yeah. no, it's actually better because it's a kaiju crossover. Like I saw Ultraman. I saw Godzilla. Godzilla fucking mechs from pat labor pat, La- pat labor yeah it's like what <laughs> ava there's an, there ava, there an ava yeah there, there's an ava i don't even oh my yeah like it's like every kaiju and like and you're not one of the people who could fight it you're just some guy you're humans trying to not die and, and, so the, and it's the a thing disaster is, it's a disaster scenario game yeah but, but, but it seems to be playing you have to get away from the fight yeah but it, but it seems to be playing thing... it straight though like this stuff comes to your city and it's yeah, not it's not yeah. like it's not like edf like like this stuff comes to your city and it's like it's oh, it's like the original well, godzilla movie where it's like what do i do like, like, i will say die. this very much seems like a simple whatever number they're at now yeah. where like the the graphics are like not the best yeah but it's a but it's a humorous situation told very seriously yeah so well, yeah, i don't it's, know it's if like we're original play it, but i'm really like, curious yeah i, I don't I, this is something i question i don't even know if it's coming to america if it is I i'll get it, it. I but like I, it. I it just i i don't know the, the, like even though it doesn't make sense like not really it doesn't make sense if you explain it but you know how some games just have like an aesthetic, like yeah. like this is not going to be localized to the states. This just looks like a game that won't be localized. It just kind of has that vibe to me. Like EDF, even though EDF was localized, it looks like something that wouldn't have been localized. You know? Yeah. This looks like that. It just has that look to me. Uh, so I, I uh, very much don't think it's going to get localized, but yeah. that does not mean people well, aren't going to Yeah, for, especially for copyright it. clusterfuck, like the Super Robot Wars games. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, the Super Robot Wars games fa- uh, famously have all of these characters, and we don't get those ones. We get, like, the original character ones. Yeah, I was going to um, say, to, to be fair, the reason... Like, it might be different with Kaiju, but the reason... From what I've heard, the reason we don't get Super Robot Wars is because of just one guy who's a dick. Like, the Robotech <laughs> guy, because... Oh, when, when yeah, they localized the, the Harmony it, Gold guy. Yeah, yeah. When, they, when they localized the game, they were like, well, it's gotta be Macross, because it's actually Macross. And the guy was like, no, it's Robotech. I made this happen in America. It's like, well, no, then. So it's like, that that, that guy is basically... What, I hate that back. guy. Yeah. I hate that guy. Yeah. He, he's literally stopped the rest of macross coming to america like, yeah and and almost every super robot wars game and it's like dude come on you know it, it's like that's exactly why i thought jojo all-star battle and eyes of heaven would never make it here because of all those copyrighted names and they're like well what if we just fudge the names so i was like oh okay because like the thing is araki jojo's creator himself did not want to bring it over to the west be- because they would have to compromise the names to do it. Like, we could have gotten the PS2 Part 5 Golden Wind game, but they would have to radically change the, the Stan's names. And he was like, but you can't do that because that you actually... that way for a reason. Yeah, like, that yeah. actually matters. They're, they're like, regarding the personality. And, like, it, it's, it's really frustrating, but I actually do understand it. 
and so we didn't get Golden Win. So I could not believe that we got All Star Battle because they they were able to fudge it enough that you know what it's supposed to be without it actually being that thing. But the Robotech guy, he spliced up different series of anime. Like basically, it's like there are three anime. You know, but yeah, but basically, it's that's that's the thing. It's like um, it's like if we were to, no one's gonna get this, so this isn't even the best explanation. But it's it's like it's like it, it's like if we were to get the uh, the metal der like um you know it's not a super sentai show but it's kind of like that it's like if we were to get metal der and the guy who created vr troopers was like no they're vr troopers it's like that it's like uh, come on guy like i know you did the best with what you had and were able to get it to us in some form so you do deserve credit but like but that's not what the actual show is you know the the thing is robotech is something that's com- uh, that is different than macross yeah uh, he what he did was he, he he did basically the samurai pizza cats thing but did it in a serious way mm. he he took three unrelated anime uh and linked them all together in a grand story and made his own thing out mm. of found footage essentially yeah there's, know, there's, like, so there's officially no such thing as robotech <laughs> So so he he made his own found footage anime series out of three different anime yeah. series. Mm-hmm. Um and that there there there's something to be said about that and it's worth watching on its own. Yeah. But uh, he, he just But that's the thing like Robotech didn't come from Japan. Oh, Super Robot Wars doesn't have Robotech. <laughs> there's other good Macross series that he's denying like you make a deal man like yeah. take some money in order to make this happen, right? you know. But anyway, um, we should yeah. we should finish up here. But it, but yeah, uh, City Shroud and Shadow looks pretty. It. Like I don't know if it's gonna be this grand epic, but it looks like a game that'd be f- like fun to. I don't even know if it's fun to play because I don't know what gameplay is like. But fun it to does, watch someone play. Well, yeah, it, it looks like it'd be fun to experience. That's the, that's the kind of thing where if they get a translation patch, that's the kind of game that I would buy and maybe even let's play just because it's like I know you haven't heard of this, so let's take a look. You know that that kind of thing. The only game that it re- uh, the game that it most reminds me of in concept is ro- uh, Robot uh, Com- Alchemic Drive, okay. um, where, which is one of the only second person games that I've ever played. Oh, um, <laughs> wow! It's kind of a second person game. It's technically first person. So um, yeah, the only second person games I could think of are like dating sims. So so what you are is you're you're a kid on the ground. Uh, controlling the mech that saves the city. Oh. Uh, so, so you basically have a controller, and you're on the ground, and you physically have to get out of the way of the robots trampling you and oh, all wow. this other stuff. So you're controlling the robot and controlling the kid. You, you know what that uh, sounds like almost to me? It's not quite the same, but it almost sounds like Super Nintendo Godzilla, where you, the yeah. player, are controlling Godzilla, but in the story, you're controlling the people controlling Godzilla. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, it, it sounds interesting, so I, I can't wait, uh, to, it, it sounds kind of like, um, like Raw Danger or one, one of those Yeah, that's kind of, that, that's what it made only... me think of, like, like, it does yeah. look like it's taking itself seriously, like, buildings are destroyed, oh no, like, our, our neighborhood is destroyed, we have to find shelter, I, I don't mean, like, we gotta take cover, I mean, like, now we're displaced from our homes, how do we survive in this real life situation, except that the cause of the disaster is, like, a monster, y- you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, uh, kind, kind of like Bowser in uh, SimCity on SNES. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I never did that. I, I had, like, the weird spider alien thing from SimCity 2000. Yeah, on in, in on, uh, on the PC. Yeah, on PC, yeah. But uh, that's the show for this week. We want to thank our fan who uh, contributed the question this week. Please keep us supplied with awesome topics by submitting your questions of your own on YouTube, our YouTube and SoundCloud pages. While there, please give us thumbs-ups likes, and five-star ratings on iTunes. It helps us promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep me sane. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what, what? Catch us, uh, sane. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> We're all sane in here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You can also catch us on Thursdays on our sister podcast, Reactive Consciousness, the in-depth podcast about our li- uh, this week in our lives. Finally, you can friend me as Vise the Bold on Steam, PSN, Xbox Live, and Twitter. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And if you're interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, or even selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, then maybe consider swinging by my Patreon, which can be found at patreon.com slash lotusprince. And I'm Power Jack Frost. You can look for me as that person or Cloud08540 on Battle.net, Steam, PSN. And Bungie.net. <laughs>
<laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll catch you on Thursday. Until next time, everyone. Good night. <laughs>